let's take a look at how some of these double angle and half angle identities can help us in solving equations. Mainly it's just the double angle ones to be to be completely honest. Um, okay, so we have done solving equations so far. Um, let's take a look at this one. So sine of 2x is equal to sine x and we need to solve on the interval 0 to 2 pi. Um, now first of all, just this this 2x should really be in parentheses. Okay, sine of the quantity 2x. As opposed to the sine of 2, you know, times x. That's that's a different, that's not what we mean. So those parentheses really should be there. And I'll put them here too. So what do we think about when we solve equations? Well, when we solve trig equations, I think I've told you that we would, uh, you know, the basic principles of algebra apply. We want to uh, set things equal to 0 if possible. Um, we often will we will call things like the sine x we might replace with a letter, you know, a for instance. Um, but before we do any of that, we have to look at the one way in which this is different than the ones we've seen before. Uh, this is sine of 2x equal to sine x, and um, students are often tempted to just like divide that two out somehow. But you can't do that because that this is the sign of some quantity 2x. And that 2, you, you really can't divide by it. If it was out here, yes, you could. But it's not, uh, so we can't. So what can we do? Well, one thing we can do, because that's a little awkward. I mean, here we have the sign of x. This is the sign of 2x. So I can't, like, call this a. And I can't call this, like, 2a. It doesn't really make, it doesn't really work like that. Sign of x is one whole thing. It would be nice if this was the sign of this side had the sine of x in it, not the sine of 2x. Well, fortunately, we have an identity for that. If you look back, the sine of 2 times anything is 2 sine that thing times cosine of that thing. So we can rewrite this as, or the left-hand side, we can rewrite it as 2 sine x cosine x. And the right-hand side, we could say equals sine x. All right, so now we can do like we do in algebra. We can, if you'd like, we can call, uh, we can make a, some letter substitutions. We can call a equal to sine x, just so you can sort of see the overall structure. We can call b cosine of x. So now I can rewrite this just temporarily. This is 2ab is equal to a. And now I want to set it equal to 0 as usual. So now I've got 2ab minus uh, a is equal to 0. And you'll notice I can factor out an a. So this is a times 2b minus 1 equals 0, which means that a equals 0 uh, and 2b minus 1 equals 0. In other words, b equals 1 half. But remember, my a is really sine of x, so this really means, so we'll go over here, this really means sine of x equals 0. And uh, b is cosine of x, cosine of x equals 1 half. All right, but now we're solving for x. So to solve for x, we have to find, we have to solve this equation now. Sine of x equals 0 on the interval 0 to 2 pi. That happens here when, uh, when theta is 0, when x is 0. And also here at pi. So this equation here produces the answers 0 and pi. Here, cosine is 1 half. That means cosine is 1 half. That's a positive ratio, so that means... We're going to have to draw a triangle where cosine is positive, which is this quadrant. That would have to be a 1 and that a 2 by the definition of cosine. And then cosine is also positive in quadrant 4, making that a 2 and then a negative root 3. And so the answers are this angle here, which is pi over 3, and then this one here, which is 5 pi over 3. So nothing is new except the very first step, which was this substitution. 
let's look at this one. Cosine of 2x equals cosine x. Looks like this sort of the sister to this, this equation over here. Again, the problem is it's a cosine of 2x, and this is the cosine of x, making it difficult for, for me to, to sort of... Uh, to sort of call, you know, call the cosine x an a, because then I can't call, I don't know what to call this. It's, it's a little bit more complicated than I think. But cosine of 2x, unlike sine of 2x, has three identities, right? Look, it has three of them. So which one are we going to want to use? We're probably going to want to use the one that just has cosines in it, because this other side has a cosine in it. So if we, we don't want to get sines and cosines mixed up if we don't have to. Here we had no choice, but it all worked out. So I'm going to use the identity 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. That equals cosine of 2x. So I'm going to rewrite the left-hand side like that. And now this problem is just like just like ones we've done in the past. So I'm going to, I'm going to pause it, or I ask you to pause the video and try this one on your own. And then unpause it, and I'll just finish the problem without, without any dial, uh, without talking about it. And you can just check your answer. All right, so hopefully you paused and now you're back. So I'm just going to finish this problem. All right, there you go. Check your answers with me, and uh, hopefully you did well.